So in this video, we are going to talk about the concept of GraphQL. Uh, this is something that Salesforce has recently introduced for Lightning Web Component. So before we actually talk about how this GraphQL works in Salesforce LWC, let's talk about what is GraphQL in general. So GraphQL is a query language for the API and runtime to execute those queries that you are providing on the existing data that you have in your database. In our case, the database is Salesforce. So let me repeat it again. GraphQL is a query language for the API and provides the runtime to execute the queries on the existing data that is available on your database. It could be Salesforce and outside of Salesforce platform, it is any different database like MySQL, uh, Oracle or any other database. Now in Salesforce Lightning Web Component, how we can utilize it? What would be the purpose? So the purpose of this GraphQL is basically to give you the ability to query the records inside the Lightning Web Component itself without writing even a single line of Apex code. So in the previous videos, we have talked about uh, some UI related list APIs to get the records for certain parent or certain record IDs. But this GraphQL is completely different. This is going to give you the ability to execute a SQL query here itself in Lightning Web Component. That SQL query can contains dynamic filters. That SQL query can contains parent to child relationship, child to parent relationship. Basically, every single SQL query that you can run into Apex class that can be executed here in Lightning Web Component with the help of GraphQL. Now, as this is a very good and I would say exciting feature, there are some limitations. So the number one limitation is this works on top of UI record API. So this is only going to query the records or it is only able to query the objects that are supported by UI record API. So to check the supported object, you can always go to Google and search for the supported object in UI record API Salesforce. And there are some other limitations in order to use some dynamic queries that we will talk about while we are reading the document. So let's quickly first talk about uh, the client. So there is a client that is really really helpful for us to execute, prepare and run the GraphQL queries and that client name is Alt Air Client. Alt Air Client. Alt Air Client. So if you say alt air client and google it so this is the alt air client graphql client and if you click on this this alt air client is actually available for uh, all kind of devices all the browsers and many more so this is really really i would say kind of an awesome tool for us to prepare the graphql queries and execute those and you can also install this uh, Altair client into your browser as well as into your operating system. So I have already installed this GraphQL, Alt GraphQL, uh, sorry, Altair client into my Microsoft S and this is the extension. And if you click this, uh, this extension is going to kind of open uh, this view for me. So this is a sample query that I was trying uh, before uh, this video. So you might see the ui something like this you might see the ui something like this without this url you are not going to see some anything so what we will do is we will try the graphql first here in this browser and then after that we are going to try it in lightning web component the reason we are trying it here because we will see how exactly the query is getting created what are all the required a syntax for creating a GraphQL query, how the result comes into the 
a UI as a response and then we will uh, work on the LWC side. So to work with the GraphQL, we need couple of things. First, Salesforce access token and uh, second is the URL of your org which we are working with. So all these we are going to get from VS Code. So just navigate to the VS Code, go to terminal and search, uh, not search, type this command sf org display so this is going to display the detail about the current org that is connected with this project that is connected with this project so if you see it is giving me the access token so copy the access token that you get go to this uh, altair client and click on this the top icon you see on the left just click on that for header just to say authorization authorization and header value say beer and space paste your access token and then save it then save it and for the url let's uh, get back to the vs code again copy this instance url value you see it here copy this instance url value you get back to alt air client as well and then paste it and then this is your base url uh, let me see if i can give it a zoom maybe i will see okay settings okay not that much yes so this is the base url for your org and after the base url you have to append services you have to attend services and let me take it here from here services data okay this is the window yes we have to say services data and the version of our salesforce org that is version uh, 59.0 and then graphql okay that is the one that we have to do this is how your url going to look like now if you want to see the document about a graphql on this uh, on the right hand side you see there is something called docs if you click on that you would see that there are uh, two types of document we have got query and mutation we are going to focus on query so if you click on query it will say ui api yes because we are going to use a ui api our graphql itself work on ui api so if you click on this you will see do you want to make a query do you want to make aggregate query what you want right so we are going to start with simple query and then you will see the list of all the objects that are available in your salesforce org okay so this is basically nothing this is the documentation which is going to kind of give you how your uh, graphql query can be uh, syn uh, the syntax of graphql query can be okay now this is where this is the place where you have to write your graphql query so your GraphQL query is always going to start with the name query and as we are writing a query so there has to be a name of query and we will say get let's say we are saying get accounts and then opening and closing curly braces query the name of query let me give it a zoom so query the name of query and then this this is nothing uh, this is not actually the graphql this is not actually the graphql okay we have to give the query and the name of query and here now what is the api by which we are executing the query in our case it is ui api so we will say ui api and as soon as you tie ui it is going to give you the interface it is going to give you the suggestion that is why this Altair client becomes a really awesome tool. It is going to give you the suggestion. So let's say UI API and then again opening and closing curly braces. Now with the help of UI API what you wanted to do? You wanted to perform a normal query or aggregate query. So we are, we are going to start with normal query. So we will type query here. As soon as you type Q you are going to see this query. Okay or maybe if you do control space if you do control space 
so you will see all the possible results that we could use here so we can use query and we can use aggregate query or even we can use object infos to get the information about object we are going to use query here so let's use query and then again opening and closing curly braces now if we are doing the query let's get back to salesforce and uh, run a simple query maybe on account to query two fields like select id name from account id name from account so if you are doing a query then you are telling from which object you are doing the query right which object you are doing the query so the object is account right the object is account so that is what you have to put here under this query you have to say which object you wanted to query and as soon as you start typing you will get the suggestion for all available objects here we want to query account then again we will say okay use opening and closing curly braces and under this account you will have edges you will have edges and then under edges you will have node and under node you are going to have all your fields that you wanted to query all your fields that you wanted to query so you will say id and then you don't need to put comma don't need to put comma here just say let's say name if it is name if if it is any field rather than id if it is any field rather than id you have to put the field api name then opening and closing curly braces and then you have to at least put value you have to at least put value here so what you are saying is you want to get the id and the name of account id and the name of account and let's go ahead let's go ahead and execute this query let's click on this send request so once you click on this send request you will see here there is a success 200 response that you have got and you have got data then you have got ua ui api query account and ss ss are going to have the fields the fields that you are querying all the records you could see here all the records that are available in your salesforce org that are being queried here in the query result that are being queried here in the query result and in the last in the last you will also see okay not sure if this is visible or not but in the last you will also see the errors if there is any error that should be visible to you as well that should be visible to you as well okay um sorry not printing i just wanted to um increase the browser size yes okay so this is a very simple and normal query that we have put here very simple and normal query that we have put here now let's say let's say that you wanted to add limit in your circle query let's say that you have a query called limit limit 10 right and you wanted to execute so it is only going to give you the 10 records right it is only going to give you the 10 records so how you will add the limit in your graph ql how you are going to add the limit in your graph ql so any limit any filter condition any order by anything you have to put inside this object inside this object api name how after the object api name use opening and closing parenthesis and as soon as you write opening and closing parenthesis you will see what all you could use inside that what all you could use inside that opening and closing parenthesis so if you have to put limit you have to put limit for that there is a keyword there is an attribute called first so you have to say first colon and then you need to say 20 or maybe let's say first five so it is going to give you the first five records now if you send request click on send request you will see there are only five records that are coming up here 
there are only five records that are coming up here so that is how you put the limit in your graphql queries